Hi there, I'm Matt Montgomery. I'm part of the agronomic team here at Bex. And today I wanna to spend just a little bit of time talking about winter annuals. And I wanna talk about some of the associated problems with winter annuals that sometimes go underappreciated. You know, we all know the list of winter annuals, things like what you see here, henbit, those square stems, purple flowers that look alike dead nettle. Again, square stems, a little different leaf structure, chickweed, mustards, the list could go on and on. But the stuff that makes fields green and woolly each spring. There are some reasons that we manage those that are pretty common to us. We want to reduce competition for water, nutrients, light, and space. The same reasons we always try to manage weeds. But there are some other issues that come with this kind of green wooliness in the spring. One thing is that they take our narrow planting window and they narrow it up further still. We have a hard enough time getting a crop in the field each year. By some accounts, it may be one out of every three days that we get a shot at planting on average and sometimes it's much, much worse than that. When we have green material, thick carpets of green material out in the field, they're keeping it wet and they're keeping it cool. They're reducing the chances we have at a clean shot at planting. The other thing is that this can become an impediment to good seed to soil contact. We may see less good seed to soil contact, which can mess up our stand. It can pull us away from the uniformity that we strive for and struggle with anyway. One of the other things to keep in mind with winter annuals, this becomes a great attractant for things like black cutworm. Black cutworm moths are migrating up from the Southern United States from the Gulf each year with storm fronts. They come into areas like this and they're going to look for thick carpets of green out in the field to deposit their eggs in. It makes sense. They wanna make sure their young have a feed source, a food source to survive upon. And then as those young, already probably a little elevated in number because the field was woolly, come into the area and start feeding, they're going to have an alternate food source that has no trait and no treatment. And that means they can reach really large sizes before they're finally exposed to those two control mechanisms in the crop, giving us a chance for that pest to feed and feed and feed before it finally succumbs to the trait and treatment. Meaning that we can see them get their licks in to a yield stand reducing level a little bit more often where we have green woolly fields. One other thing to keep in mind about winter annuals out in the field, this becomes a really effective green bridge for the number one soybean pest, soybean cyst nematode. If we rotate to corn, usually what we're hoping we will accomplish by that is having no root material that soybean cyst nematode can survive upon. If we have this kind of stuff out in the field, this gives them root material that they can survive upon, and it begins to minimize that population reducing impact of having a non-host crop like corn. It gives the pest a green bridge to limp through to the next time that we're going to plant beans. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon.